Let's start with this um, plastic brain. Here's a skull, and inside the skull, surrounded by spinal fluid that cushions it, is the brain. The brain is divided into a right side and a left side, um, and then into lobes. So this is the right hemisphere. This is the left hemisphere. Experimentation has shown that two different hemispheres or sides of the brain are responsible for two different modes or manners of thinking. And research also suggests that we prefer one side or the other. So what's the difference? Let's find out. The right brain is responsible for random, intuitive, holistic, synthesized, and subjective thinking. Right brain thinkers tend not to be so detail-oriented. They first apply creativity to problem solving. The right brain deals with feeling, intuition, symbols, images, risk-taking, philosophy, and religion. The right hemisphere is generally very good with expression, spatial awareness, seeing the big picture, intuition, creative thinking, problem solving, and picking up emotional signals. The right side of the brain is considered to be chaotic. It absorbs disconnected streams of information simultaneously. Poetic. It's sensitive to pleasure caused by words, pictures, colours and their combinations. Imaginative. It makes new connections between facts to generate new ones. Risk-taking. It fights the restraints of logic and self-preservation. Philosophical. It generates meaning around abstract concepts such as faith or politics. Spatially aware, it can track the position of objects in three-dimensional space. Symbolic, it perceives meaning in shape or colour. Left controlling, it controls the left side of the body. Left brain dominant thinkers prefer logic, sequential, analytical, rational and objective thinking. And they are detail oriented. They prefer reason over everything else. The right brain deals with feeling, intuition, symbols, images, risk taking, philosophy and religion. The left hemisphere is generally very good at receiving information, being organized, doing things logically, following instructions, abstract thinking attending to detail and enjoying language, words and wordplay. The way that the left and right hemispheres of the brain perceive information from the senses is therefore subtly different. Research shows that individuals choose left or right brain thinking depending on how they like to attack solutions and solve problems. And some people consider themselves whole brain thinkers. They adapt equally to using the left and right side of their thinking capacities. To a great degree, your personality is shaped by your brain type. The dominant side of your brain may control your homework habits, your grades, and even your study skills. So take that into consideration when you're having trouble with an assignment. Think about whether or not you're a left brain or right brain thinker and find the solutions to your problems. Maybe you're an artist, maybe you're a mathematician, perhaps you're a social personality or an investigative personality, or perhaps you're just not sure. Now, in the 1960s, we tended to categorize people as either left-brained or right-brained. But as further research has been done, we've come to understand that both sides of the brain are capable of all kinds of processing, but with their own unique way of doing so. So nowadays, we see brain bias not so much as either or, but more as a continuum. And each person resides at a certain point on the left brain, right brain scale. Where they stand on that scale determines their own unique blend of left brain and right brain characteristics. Now there are two main contributing factors to each person's particular brain bias. The first is their genetic inclination. This is the degree to which they're predisposed to use one side of their brain or the other because of their particular DNA pattern. The second factor is what we call societal pressure. Or, in other words, 
our tendency to emphasise one side of our brain over the other because of factors such as our early successes at school, parental expectations for our job or career. You know, forget being an artist, you'll never make any money. Perhaps the greatest impact on our brain bias, though, comes from the requirements of our job. Because most businesses tend to value consistency and predictability over creativity, employees are generally encouraged to use their left brain far more than their right. So, for all these reasons, most of us have a bias in favour of one side of our brains over the other. Most commonly, this will be a bias towards the left side for the reasons we've already discussed. This has significant consequences in terms of our ability to problem solve, absorb new ideas and generate new and better ways of doing things. With a deliberate push for government controlled educational curriculums, generation after generation of the youth are being taught to focus only on the facts, figures and numbers. Repetition is used to train children subconsciously to accept what they're learning. Children aren't rewarded for questioning the validity of the information they receive. They are ridiculed. However, the children who blindly accept the information as true and merely regurgitate the information on command when it is time to take a test, those children go on to become the decision makers in our government, law, medicine, business, and every other occupation with power and prestige. School is an 18-year forced government training program that sterilizes the potential for brilliance in children, those who actually survive schooling and survive conformity and continue on to think for themselves truly are a rare breed. All children start out as curious, highly experimental minds, and then one day they're sent to school. Mandatory schooling has never consisted of anything but the memorization of monotonous dead facts and training children to master repetitious behavior. For the greater part of their day, everything the child says must match the interest of their school teachers. Their behavior must coincide with a set policy and a set regulation. They cannot use the bathrooms without permission. If they wish to speak, they must raise their hands. And after every hour or so, a bell rings and everyone must move to it. It couldn't be any more slave-like. And this type of training becomes a ritual for the child. It becomes the plot background for their television shows and books or the ideology taught to them by a teacher or a parent. An entire monoculture is being developed here, stripping children of their power to cause trouble for the state at an early age, training them to be good servants of the politically correct. Their environment is much like a prison by the population lacking any ability to check the authority of the warden. The process becomes a matter of rubber stamping. They have no control over their entire lives, which is directly related to youth violence because the only control they have is between each other. Mandatory schooling produces children who are either terrified of the tyranny of others or have been raised to perpetually exploit the conditions of others. It's just like the prison system, forced cohabitation. The child's presence in certain buildings and their engagement in state-regulated behavior is under penalty of imprisonment. An entire army of truancy officers have been hired to make sure that no child is on the other side of the bars. At the end of 18 years of coercive state authority, the child is released into the world. It's like the end of an 18-year prison sentence. Now that you're trained to do as you're told, now you can be free. And the produce of these schools, or this state-controlled manufacturing operation, is a society willing to submit to, to obey, and to listen. This is your group of workers who surrender their lives to the corporation, who tells them how to dress, how to speak, what time to wake up, which means they essentially tell you what time to go to sleep if they tell you what time to wake up. This is nothing new. These are the fruits of mandatory schooling. The energy that flows here is male and female energy. Male energy is focused, and female energy is creative and random. Neither of them is greater nor weaker than the other, and both can be extremely powerful when fully manifested. Female energy is the land of unbridled possibilities, creative potential, and affecting the universe from within. Focused male energy takes direct roads from point A to point B. This energy can be as strong as a tank, accomplishing tasks and going where it needs to go, with precision and without distraction. From this understanding, you can see how we use these energies in our lives. It's the difference between driving straight to work and being on schedule all the time, and taking the scenic route because it's a more pleasant ride, even if it means being late. It's baking a cake strictly by what it says in the cookbook, and putting it together with what just feels right. It's getting that promotion for working the hardest, and getting that promotion for coming up with the best ideas. 
Both male and female energy have their own traits. Male energy is linear, analytical, strategic, and practical. However, when male energy is constricted, it is very blundering and confrontational, and what tends to occur is not seeing all sides of a situation, or not being open to any other possibility other than the one being pursued. You can see a lot of that in today's society. Most commonly, we call it being closed-minded. The left brain is the male energy side of the brain. It is orderly, statistical, logical, and mathematical. It sees things in straight lines, rational and practical. The right brain is the female energy side of the brain. It is our creative side, a free spirit. It is passion and experience of taste and feeling, movement and art, as is the same with the energy. The left brain cannot make sense out of the right brain. You cannot put feelings and expressions within boxes. They must be felt to be truly experienced. The right brain too cannot make sense about how the left brain understands things. We essentially have a male energy imbalance. There is way too much of it. It is dominant and is constricting on the female side of the brain. So, there's nothing wrong with our female energy. We're just not really using it to potential. Our male energy is really messed up, and that's why we're where we are right now. By where we are, I mean the economical, political, financial, religious, nuclear, dolphin and bee-killing global war crisis. After lesson one, I touched upon how right now the world is a mess in a myriad of areas. A few people commented saying, well, study the financial crisis and study the nuclear crisis and study the political crisis. They're all completely separate issues. And this is how the male energy looks at parts. We're realizing now that it's constricting on our point of view. As a whole, all of these issues together are further proof that we don't understand how to be harmonious because our male energy is out of sync with each other and the planet.